Going forward. Hey Louise, how are you doing? Alright, thank you. Nice to see you. You can have some of my water if you like. Oh, cheers. Okay. So you're not playing your guitar anymore, do you? Leave it on the bus or what? I'm not playing it on some of the set because I want to be able to move around a bit more. Right. Because um, you're, like, you're tied to the mic the whole time and it got a bit boring, so I thought so I'd you do your ditch your, it for a bit. Some of your Debbie Harry moves. Yeah. <laughs> when people talk about sleeper, they almost always talk about stuff you've said. Has your mouth helped sell the band or has it got in the way of the music? <laughs> I'm not sure. I know. I think music journalis journalism gets a bit boring some of the time. So I thought I'd do all the Bobby No Mates journalists at the end of me a favour and sort of give them something else to write about. So, so you, uh, yeah, so you, <laughs> you give them a bit of, bit of copy. Yeah. Yeah, you've been very, very kind. <laughs> they're, a sad, they're a sad bunch of, sad bunch of lads. Um, does yeah, the world yeah. still have different expectations of male and female musicians? You said somewhere that there's an expectation that uh, the women are expected to be psychologically damaged in a way that the boys aren't. Is that true? I think a little bit. I think they're analysed to death because there's still very few of them. And, you know, they're supposed to, like, talk about what it is to be female. They're supposed to say, oh, it's really hard being a woman and they're supposed to be, you know, screwed up. Right. People like women to write very emotional, screwed up songs. So it's gender don't. specific in a way. Yeah, the, everything the you do are. is supposed to be gender specific if you're a woman in a band. Yeah. The, the memory of your, your dad seems very central to what you do and your lyrics. Yeah. What kind of a life did he, did he have? Was his life very different from the one that he wanted? Yeah, it was. And my dad was really quite brilliant. And I think circumstances just conspired to sort of keep him down. And the feeling of frustration that he had was like palpable from, like, from when I was a very small kid. And it was the thing that was kind of ever present in our house. So. What did he do? He worked as a civil servant for like sort of 30 years, trolling in on the tube every day. And he just. I think he would have liked to have done something very different. How did you, how did you uh, gravitate towards rock music then, when there's like, all this uh, pressure on you to go down the, the lacy lady in the gold mine? Um, I don't know. I think it, it helped having an older brother and sister. And they'd just sort of come home and sort of start be playing sort of punk and all kinds of stuff. And if you listen to something like The Jam in my road, it was like, what the hell is that? You know, why are you even listening to it? Yeah. It was sort of themed a little bit odd, I think. Yeah. You've been very hard on hairy-legged feminists, haven't you? <laughs> Do you shave, wax or pluck? I do all of those things. And Me any, too. Anything left over, I sandpaper down, you know. But I don't know, that was really more about, I think, sort of feminism in the 90s has really sort of become this kind of 
nasty feuding ghetto and it's kind of just replaced um, one set of stereotypes with another set of stereotypes and that's, you know, I think that kind of feminism deserves the piss taken out of it a little bit. Do you get on better with uh, men than women? I mean, you're, you're <laughs> travelling you're traveling in the country with uh, that fine bunch of uh, inscrutable lads. Yeah. Do you, do, you, do you say women like to talk about their problems? You've said women like to talk about their problems more than men. I don't get men. on better with men you than don't. women, no. I think, you know, I get on generally with people that have got half a brain, and the you know, last time I looked, that was equally distributed between men and women, so... Right. There's a song called Mr. Mr. Gorski on, on the album. Who's Mr. Gorski? Oh, Mr. Gorski, well, um, when Neil Armstrong went on his first spacewalk, apparently he said the words, good luck, Mr. Gorski. And no one knew what he meant, no one knew what he was talking about. And I thought, oh God, he's in league with the Russians or something. Who is this Mr. Gorsky? And um, he, he refused to say who it was until quite recently. And it turns out to be his next door neighbour. Um, when he was a little kid, he knocked his ball into the next door neighbour's garden, went in to collect, heard Mr. and Mrs. Gorsky having this ferocious row. And Mrs. Gorsky was going, oral sex, oral sex. You'll get oral sex the day the kid next door walks on the moon. <laughs> and he did, and he wished him luck. <laughs> so this is Lucky Night in 1969. OK, thank you, Louise. Cheers. More from Sleeper later. But we stay with music as Miranda and I play Eamon and Anthea and greet the record industry's five separate occasions. They win Grammys, they've met Bill